Welcome back everyone. So we got our host deployed, we got our vCenter deployed. Now I want to get to actually configuring the new vCenter, which is really our last step before we get into the actual NSXT deployment. So here we are, we're in the new vCenter, MG VCSA 01. Uh, and I've got the data center named Tampa and I created a couple of clusters, but they're empty right now. So what I'm gonna do is actually add my host that I created into these clusters. To do that, I'm gonna right click on the first cluster, compute cluster, and go to add host. And I'm gonna put in my IPs for these, which should be 254.11, and the other one will be 254.12, and they both have the same credentials. So I'll throw those in here. And hit next. Need to make sure I check that. Everything is good. Next. And finish. So that'll take a minute. Once those come up, I'm going to go ahead and do the same for the edge cluster for the additional two hosts there. And there we have it. So our hosts are in there. I'm going to take them out of maintenance mode uh, at this point, really quick. And there is one last thing we'll have to do to those, so I will come back to that. All right, so I'm gonna minimize this, keep that out of the way, and we're gonna do the same for the edge cluster. We're gonna add those hosts, and these are gonna be 254.13 and 254.23. And there we have it. All right, so those are done. We're gonna remove those from maintenance mode as well. Now, before I proceed, the one thing which is completely unrelated to NSX, more of just a lab kind of housekeeping item, uh, is if you recall when I configured the VMs that are housing these nested vSphere instances, I configured two hard drives. I had a 40 gig and a 250 gig. Now the 40 was dedicated to just ESX being installed on it and the 250 was supposed to be for basically the local data store where I'm gonna store my VMs once I get around to uploading them. At this point, I have basically a bare host, but I don't have any actual data stores configured on the host. So I need to do that before I can even upload the ISO images that I plan on using for my workload VMs. So I'm gonna set up a data store on all four of these hosts. I'm gonna fast forward through it, but feel free to go back and pause if you wanna kinda of see what I did to do that. All right, so there you have it. So now my warning is gone saying that I don't have any data stores available. And I can actually see that if I go to, uh, did, actually data stores right there, you can see now I have a data store and I have 258 or 249 rather uh, gigs uh, of capacity. Now I will say that if you are sharper than me, you can set up some shared storage in your lab and you can kind of skip over all of this uh, and you just add the data store to all of your hosts essentially. Uh, however, I'm not doing that, it's just local data stores in this case. All right, so moving on, we're gonna take a look now at the networking piece. So to do the networking, what I wanna do is, actually I wanna take a look here and show you guys how it's configured currently for these hosts. So I'll go to my first host, configure virtual switches. Let me move this out of our way. Now if you see here, we have vSwitch zero, it's a standard switch, and we have two port groups. We have the VM network and management network. We're not gonna to touch this because that's what our VM kernel is on, which is essentially our management uh, for this host. Now you'll see that both of those are backed by one physical interface, which is VM NIC zero. We do have additional interfaces here. So what I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna leave this one alone and I'm actually going to uh, configure a distributed switch for all of these hosts. And I'm gonna add all of those hosts to that distributed switch. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of a distributed switch or what makes it different than a standard switch, think about it this way. 
If I have this standard switch here, I can create a port group and maybe I'll call it blue and I'll tag it VLAN 60. Now if I go to a host 12, that port group is not available for any VMs on that host. So essentially with a standard switch, you have to do it on a per host basis, whereas a distributed switch is exactly what it sounds like. It's distributed. I can create a port group in one place and all of the hosts that are already added to that distributed switch will now have access to use that port group for the VMs that sit on top of that host. So let's go configure our distributed switch. To do that, we're gonna click this little networking button here. We're gonna expand our data center. I'm gonna right click on that and go to distributed switch, new distributed switch. I'm gonna name this prod VDS. Now it is important to note that if you're running NSXT 3.0 and you plan to do the converged VDS option, which is the one I'm going to show you, that you have to be on 7.0 version of the distributed switch. If for some reason you pick 6.6.0 and you try to follow along with my instructions, it will not work. So keep that in mind. So we're gonna go ahead and hit next and we'll leave that the same. I'm not gonna create a default port group because we'll create our own. And we'll hit finish. So now inside of this distributed switch, the first thing we need to do right off the bat is set the MTU um, to at least 1700. So I'm gonna go to configure and we'll see here it's set to 1500 and this is to account for the overlay traffic uh, which does add some overhead. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna do 1700 and you can technically get away with a little bit less but I like to have a little buffer. All right, so that's done. Now I'm gonna create a couple of port groups and we'll be using these as part of the NSXT setup. Um, so I'm gonna get them out of the way now. So our first one is going to be an all trunk distributed port group. This is just going to trunk all of our VLANs straight through and we'll do some tagging in NSX. The key thing here is make sure under VLAN type, you select VLAN trunking and then just leave this to the default. All right, so the next one we're gonna do is our management port group. And this is gonna give us access to our management VLAN, uh, which we'll need for a couple of purposes. Here are the VLAN, I'm gonna select VLAN is 251 and hit next. All right, now our last step is we need to add all of our hosts to this VDS. So to do that, I'm gonna right click on it and go to add and manage hosts. We're gonna hit add host. And then we will go in here and select all of our hosts. Hit okay. And next. Now this is gonna ask us how do we wanna map over these interfaces? Now in my case, I think what I wanna do is essentially map all of these straight over. Um, that said, I actually just realized now that the, the problem is, so VMNIC zero, I have my VM kernel adapter and if I move that interface over, it's essentially gonna break things. So what I need to do is create a default port group. Uh, if you recall, I unchecked that box when I was creating this thing. I need to go back and create one that's not tagged. So that will be for my management traffic. So let me do that really quick. So we'll go here and distributed port group. And I'm gonna call this uh, management v, uh, Actually, we'll call this management 254 because that has meaning to me. That's the subnet, it's the third octet is 254. All right, so that's not tagged. We wanna leave it all completely default. There we go. Okay, so now let's go there. And like I said, I did that so that we can actually migrate the VM kernel as part of this. So we're gonna select our host that we wanna add to this VDS. We're gonna hit next. Now, once we're here, all we really have to go is, is basically in here and, and select the interface, the physical interface, say assign uplink. Uh, and I'm gonna just leave it to the default. Uh, and you'll see here, you can check apply this uplink on the rest of the host, which is perfect. So that's gonna save us some time. And you can go through and do all of these and, and actually do them the exact same way. So you'll see here that as I did that, it actually changed not only these, but these as well and the other hosts below. So it saves you a little time, a little bit of clicking. And that's our last one. All right, so we can see here, 
Uh, these three interfaces weren't being used. The first one was being used by vSwitch Zero. We're moving it over, so these are basically gonna be owned by the distributed switch, which is fine. We'll hit next. Now it's giving us a warning saying that basically, if you make this change and you don't move these or migrate these VM kernel adapters, you're gonna lose management access to the box, which is actually kind of a nice warning. So to do that, we're gonna select the first VMK. We're gonna hit assign port group. And this is why I said I needed to make sure I created this port group. So I'm gonna select that 254 port group and I'm gonna apply it also to the rest of them because it should actually be the same on all of them. And I'm gonna verify that that is the case. So you'll see here, yep, that looks good. So we're gonna hit next. And we don't have any VMs that we're gonna migrate so we don't have to worry about those and we'll finish. Now everything should be good so let's see keep an eye on our recent tasks at the bottom and we can confirm all of our hosts were successfully added by selecting the distributed switch here and then selecting hosts and we should see all four which we do so everything looks good there so at this point we've got our host added to vCenter we've got our networks configured uh, we changed our MTU which is a big piece uh, to account for the overlay traffic also worth mentioning that in my lab all this traffic is actually going through a physical switch and I have already raised the MTU on that. So if you do have a switch that you're connected to, keep that in mind that you may have to raise the MTU on that for the overlay traffic to function. So just don't forget that. All right, so that's it for now. In our next video, we're gonna deploy the NSXT manager, add vCenter and get to all the fun stuff.